Oh, well, looks like we're at the end of the trail here, or at least we've come to the river. And that's a problem because the ranger said the bridge is out. So we're going to have to ford the river here today. And uh, let's check it out. We're going to have to find a place to get across this river. My, oh my, that's a big river, Lord. So yeah, we're going to have to get across here today. And there's no bridge. This water is probably three feet deep at least. So we're going to have to find a place to get across here. Let's see if I can see anything upstream here. Ugh. Let's check it out. Well, looks like it might be a little better crossing upstream a little bit. So uh, I think we're going to head on up. Looks like we can get through here. Let's check it out. Come on. Okay, watch your step in here. Got to duck down. Ah. Be careful in here. Interesting. Now, if I didn't have a ski pole to cross the river, I'd be looking for something like this. This is perfect. Look at that. This would make a perfect stick for crossing the river. I'd just chop a couple of these babies off with my knife and I'd be ready to go. But I got a ski pole, so let's get on. We got to find a way to ford this river and uh, there's no logs or anything. The bridge is out. And actually fording the river is probably one of the safest ways to go. Let's check out the water temperature though. Oh yeah, baby. That's cold. Okay, well that's good to know. At least the sun's out. So uh, anyway, but you know, the river's nice and shallow here. It's wide, you know, typically that's the best place to cross a river is where it's wide and shallow. But you gotta be thinking about what's downstream because if you were to get carried down, we wanna see what's down below, if there's any waterfalls or logs out there that's going to get in our way, you know, in case we accidentally get hauled downstream. So let's take a little gander down there. If you're going to be crossing the river with a group, you need to be considering your entire party. You know, I'm, I'm over six feet tall, so, you know, it's three feet right up to my crotch. Now, if I got a small woman in my group or something who's only five foot two or something, you know, that's going to make a difference for her as opposed to me crossing the river. Generally, most people have trouble crossing the river when, when the water gets more than mid-thigh. Or so that's when people start having problems but but ultimately it depends on the speed that the water is moving so you have to consider velocity and depth together in deciding where to cross the river you know shallow water can be a problem if it's moving very quickly so you want to look for a place where it's not too deep and uh, you know not moving too fast that's uh, really what you're looking for and where, where you don't have much objective danger downstream one of the things you gotta consider when you're in the mountains is most of the creeks are snow-fed rivers. So that means, you know, during the hot sun during the day, the snow's gonna melt and the rivers are gonna actually go up. So the best time to cross rivers like this is early in the morning. Now imagine if you with your pack on from up there, you get sucked downstream here, you get sucked right under that log. I mean, you'd be drowned in no time. You know, so you don't wanna be out here doing this alone. That's really important. You really shouldn't be alone. You shouldn't do this barefoot. And uh, you gotta be careful. So yeah, that's, that's a real bad spot there. But ultimately, I gotta get across the river. I have to, you know, I don't really wanna go too much farther out of my way. I gotta pick up the trail on the other side. So I'm gonna go back up there where we were. I think it's a pretty safe crossing. And uh, I'm probably not gonna get swept downstream. I'm a big guy. So let's head on back. This is the magic ticket to crossing the river. This is the best thing you're going to learn today in this video. Here they are. Water socks. These are the ticket. Yeah, I've tried everything. You know, some people use, you know, tennis shoes and some people use those Teva sandals or whatever. You know, those are pretty good. All those things. But tennis shoes are kind of heavy 
And then, uh, you know, after you walk through the river with them, they're soaking wet the rest of the day, so they're twice as heavy. These things are made out of nylon, and they dry really quickly. And uh, they're incredibly lightweight. And the other thing I really like about them is uh, when we look at the uh, soles on them, they got this nice gripper bottom, you know, which is much better than my real feet. And uh, this is what I mean about not crossing barefoot. You know, you really do not want to cross the river barefoot. Those rocks are slimy, and you can slip and fall on your butt, and it hurts. I've done it. In looking at the, the fort, I'm going to use the tripod technique, where I'm going to kind of spread my legs out, and I'm going to face upstream, and I'm going to put this uh, both my hands on my ski pole here. You could use a stick for this if you don't have a ski pole. And, uh, and that's going to be my balance as I go across the river. So I'm going to kind of move in what I call a tripod technique, kind of leaning forward upstream. And that gives me, keeps me really stable because the rocks are really slimy and wet in here. And uh, I have to be careful about that. I really don't want to fall down. Also, whenever you cross the river, you want to take off your, uh, your hip belt. And if you have a sternum strap, I don't have one on this pack, but if you did, you'd want to remove that so you can quickly get out of your backpack should you uh, fall into the river. You know, you want to be able to get quickly get out. When I cross the river, I'm going to cross going downstream. So I'm going to be facing upstream, but I'm going to be backing down. So I'm going to let the current pull me down a little bit. So I'm going to, you know, we're going to uh, start here. and I'm going to go across and at an angle across the river, not straight across. You know, not trying to really fight the current too much as I go across. That's important as well. Um, this water is really cold, so I want to get across as quickly as I can, but I need to keep my stability and be careful as I go. So I think we're ready to do it, and uh, let's get in here and, and uh, get across the river. So I start off, it's, uh, there's really no current here. You can see the deep, I know the deepest part of the river I can see just looking at it is across the bank on the opposite bank. Um, where, the, where the bank is steep. See, this bank over here is, is very gradual, and then the opposite bank is steeper. So I can see that the river's cutting, and I know that's going to be my deepest point. So coming in here in the beginning, it's not too bad. I can just kind of walk out. The rocks are very slimy, though. Got a lot of moss on some of these bigger ones. And, oh, boy, I tell you, you can't, uh, you can't feel it on the video, but this water is cold. Boy, oh, boy. And now as I'm starting to get in the current, you know, I'm going to really want to get in that tripod technique as I start being, and you can see I'm kind of going at an angle, like I said, back and down, not trying to fight the current, only moving one thing at a time in the tripod technique, right? So you've got that three-point contact going across. This is real important. And uh, really not a bad way to get across the river if you have to get across. And I'll tell you, you know, more and more with the way the things are going in the national park system, Oof. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's getting cold now. You know, more and more of these bridges are coming out, and they're not replacing them. So as you get, if you want to get into the wilderness in the backcountry, more and more you've got to uh, have these kind of skills to cross a river. Okay, and we're getting into the, oh, man. I'll tell you what, it is cold water. This is probably getting near the deepest channel as I am, you can see the water's almost up around my crotch. And uh, that's uh, plenty deep enough. You can see I'm moving my tripod. I'm backing down. I'm going kind of slow, but as fast as I can. Believe me, I don't want to stay in here any longer than I have to. This water is ice cold. And now as we get close to the bank, I think I'm actually past the deepest channel. Or, I think I, well, or maybe, you know, you can't really... It's hard to see, even though this water is clear, it magnifies in funny ways. And, boy, I don't know, it's about as deep here as anywhere as I'm closing in, but I'm past the worst of it, coming up the other side, and boy, that is cold. Whew. Jeez, I am just shivering. Oh. Like I said, don't cross rivers barefoot. You know, it's so important to be ambulatory out here. I mean, a twisted ankle can end a whole trip, and a cut in your foot can be disastrous. So really, you shouldn't be walking around barefoot in the wilderness anywhere, if you ask me, and certainly not when you're crossing a river, and not when it's this cold. Whew. Whew, after crossing that river, 
I need some sun. Let's go out to this magic spot I found out here and we can review all the things we've been talking about in this segment. First of all, you never want to do this alone. Keep in mind, I look like I'm alone here, but obviously I've got a cameraman here with me. And uh, typically, you know, river crossing like this can be quite dangerous and you need to be really careful and think about what you're doing when you attempt something like this. The other thing we want to think about is uh, we want to look for that wide and shallow place to cross the river. And this is a perfect example of it right here. You can see the embankments on either side of the river are nice and easy access and it's nice and wide and shallow. The river's moving really slowly. This is just a great spot to cross the river. Think about when you're crossing the river, think about those objective dangers. Are there snags or waterfalls downstream, something like that, that you can get hung up on. Sometimes crossing the river in a harder location where you have a, a safe run out downstream like this is better than where you have an easy crossing but where you have a waterfall immediately below you. So you need to weigh that. Like if you look upstream here, you can kind of see there's some rapids up there and uh, some snags and not necessarily a great place to cross the river except for the possibility that you got this nice safe run out down here. So you have to weigh all these options. Remember I also said wear some kind of shoes on your feet when you're crossing a river. You really don't want to cross barefoot. It's just not a good idea. You know, you can wear some tennis shoes, some Teva sandals, those water socks like I had, even just your wool socks if you've got nothing else. Wow, this is so neat down here. And the other thing you want to remember is in the springtime, in the springtime and early summer when the snow's melting, the rivers rise during the day. So the best time to cross the river, if it's at all shaky, is early in the morning when the river's the lowest. Remember, take off your waist belt. If you got a sternum strap, take those off. When the water gets over mid-thigh on most people, they're going to start having some balance problems, and that's a concern. A lot of these old footbridges that were put in many years ago are getting washed out, and the Park Service can't afford to replace them anymore. So having to ford rivers is becoming more and more a reality for the backcountry traveler. So with the proper techniques like we went over in this uh, piece today, you should be fairly safe and be able to get across most rivers in the backcountry. So go out there, have some fun, be safe. We'll see you next time.